Hi, Shomai. Oop la Bobby Hock do baby. Do you know with Hoover? I've just hoovered the house. Mrs. P is out learning how to um mm, forgotten. Something to do with sewing. Gunia in Welsh. Ne gwei, ne gwai. I don't know. Pink Floyd, ne Thomas Dolby. Which one? I think we better get this one out of the way. This is Pink Floyd. Uh, an evaluation of two songs. We're going to listen to them straight through. It's from the album, The Final Cut. We'll finish The Final Cut, thankfully. Well, not thankfully, because I think it's a great album. A, wor a true work of art. A true work of art. I have persuaded everybody by now that it is indeed a Pink Floyd album and not a... And not a... What album? David Gilmore solo album. Or a Roger Walters solo album. The only thing that's come into my awareness since I've last um, started doing these um, reviews is, of course, the... Um, presence of i'm not a true pink pink floyd fan you see so when all the all these pink floyd fans get a little uh, emotional about it not being a pink floyd album the um what happens um what happens i'll tell you what happens is that we forget the um early and i've watched a few videos of richard wright's in his early floyd days and he was obviously obviously a tony banksian of tony banks status in the pink floyd sound without going over the top with his banksian solos of course they're completely two different animals of i know that but uh, the scope of his influence and the, the the depth depth of his influence is significant. So I all right. I shall con test no more. There is no need to say that it's not a Pink Floyd album. But there, at the same time, there is no need to overstress the um, insignificance of uh, Richard Wright not being there <laughs> is he there no he's not so i think it's right to just put that to one side but at the same time acknowledge it as a major elephant in the room do you understand yes this is stand-up comedy and my therapy so we're going to proceed with um because under no i am an under no illusion that I can review coherently. All I can do is respond, not react, because I am more than a chemical. I am more than a chemical. Indeed I am. I am more than a chemical. Indeed I am. So let's press on. Where have we started? Is <laughs> Okay, now then, it's called Not Now John. I've counted four swear words already, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not going to acknowledge it, all right? It's going to be another elephant in the room. Richard is there and the swearing is there. They're behind me, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to, I thought that came in very strong and I think Gilmore's voice is far beyond anything that he can say now to convince me that this isn't 
a Pink Floyd album. He's here. He's singing on this and he's giving it all. Yeah? Hmm? Do you concur? He's giving it his all. Not only in the guitar, but in his vocal. Is he feeling it? I think he is. So that's the purpose of the, um, the bomb, beginning with F. That is the purpose, and it actually worked. It worked there because I was rabbiting on like a prat. And what does he do? He says, stop. Stop all that, he says. He says, stop. Stop all that. We've got to get on with this. Namely, what? What is he talking about? Well, I think he's talking about the war machine and the building of arms. Now, you can substitute the J for a CH and you're now here on the S, A and the I and the F and the U and the S and the A and the U and the A and the E. Are you with me, everybody? Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? We're going back to the Fletcher, Fletcher Memorial Home. Now, I don't like this part. When Roger butts in with his unmelodic middle eight refrain, which has arrived too early, if it was a middle eight arriving about three minutes later, it would be fine. This isn't, this isn't, it doesn't do anything aesthetically or melodically for me. It's, it's clumsy. It's an old man. He was about 40 when he was rapping this, was he? Yep, I think he was. I love the female backing vocals because that, of course, is a Pink Floyd echo. I haven't heard this in a long time. Now, this is brilliant, you see, because we're going back to what song? What song are we going back to? Please tell me in the comments, because I think it, it, it's, it's talk to me now. It's, it is really excellent. It's when you're one of the few. When you're one of the few. It's brilliant that it comes back here. This is, despite the unsuccessful commencement of this middle eight section which is middle 16 section this is a middle eight section as well i don't i just know that i will call the the first one the rap it was a rap and it was roger trying to rap and let's be frank it didn't work this on the other hand is a middle eight with with a plum <laughs> I'm noticing so many things. Oh, you know what? I've got the paper over the speaker. What's that? That's not going to do much for the acoustics, is it? Putting the cover over the speaker. The only speaker that's there on the Grundig, Grundig, Grundig 50-year-old tape machine. And I've got the cover over the speaker. Now, what? How? how's that going to give me more subscribers, eh, boys? How's it going to give me more subscribers? What I love here is the acoustic guitar and the backing vocals. Listen to the backing vocals. <laughs> Wow, they just sound so good on this machine coming from a cassette. It's so compact and condensed and bijou and radio, radio one on medium wave sound. And you can imagine if it wasn't, they, no, they sang on the single, they said, Sh shut all that, didn't they? Which is good. I can't play that because I haven't got it. I think I had a copy when it came out, but no, I didn't. It isn't really a single, is it, boys? It's not a single. Now then, these both those lyrics, right? Those those 
lyrics are possibly my favorite lyrics today. I've heard some lyrics today, I've sung some lyrics today, but those two lyrics say more for those enlightened minds. And anyone who wants to know, look into those two lyrics and you get your half, no, you're quarter way there to knowing what's going on. <laughs> Third line, also, as long as the kids go or no, as long as the kids go, yeah, it keeps them, as we all know, it keeps them D I S T R A C T E D. So not now, John, we've got to get on the This is blow me up. I've never really taken to this song to the extent that I'm going like that and plumping along. It is such a deep groove and it's making me smile. And I'm not worrying about those four there. You know what those four, the, you know, because that's what it, what was in the back of my mind saying, what am I going to do? If this is art, it's free speech. So the whole the wholeness of this song, and we haven't even heard the whole thing yet, is of significance. It is, as the good book says, righteous anger. But I'm not condoning the use of the F. <laughs> What does that remind me of? That reminds me of we don't talk about love. We only want to get drunk. I, there go I, but for the grace of God. highlight the manix libraries gave us power he's talking about i could go and get the vinyl album to get these lyrics i may need the vinyl to get the lyrics i'll tell you what i'll do i'll get the vinyl to open up the lyrics on the last song two sons in the sunset which we'll do some other time but this is really really inspiring me <laughs>
just realised something. I think I've done a terrible mistake. There's a lot of anger here. The Welsh word for anger is uh, dicter. If you're also dicking a town dicter, redicking grack. If you're full of anger, you're angry. Crack. Ungrack. Bit of Welsh for you there. But if you add an E, you got grace. That's what I was referring to. I've, I've been very clever there. I'm too sophisticated for some people. That's okay. But I think I've done a, mari a very, very, very fundamental mistake. I think Roger Waters is singing at the start as well, isn't he? It's not David Gilmore, is he? Please correct me in the comments and call me. You may call me a blinking buffoon. A blinking buffoon. Is that okay? But I still think it's a great song, even if Roger and not Roger, even if Roger and not David is singing. And I, feel, I still think it's Pink Floyd. <laughs> This is less successful. Whoever's shouting like that, they've lost it. It's too long. So I'm taking five marks off. And the vocals don't come through enough. Okay. Another five marks are being taken away because here Roger is being too self-indulgent and, and I can actually see David Gilmour pulling his hair out when he walks into the studio to say goodbye. He's just shaking his head and going, think of the song, think of the song. He could have said that during the Lord's Prayer interlude um, of sheep as well. But no one says that, do they? Because I think that spoils the song, right? On animals, whatever it's called, sheep, yeah? That spoils the song, not because of it, it takes um, the mickey of uh, the Lord's Prayer, but because it's a little bit boring after a while. Surely, surely you agree. <laughs> I like this fade out. I think the fade out is great. But they should take about a minute off the ranting. So, in summary, everybody, before we get to Two Sons in the Sunset, which is probably the greatest song ever sung by Pink Floyd, I think we've got to we've got to celebrate the successes of that song. And the way it's anger portrays and tries to make sense of an unjust society. And that has spoken to me he today, heavy, heavy today. That's spoken to me today. And I see and I feel even more. You know, the swearing doesn't really matter to me now because such is the unjust injustice of it all. It's righteous anger, as I've stated. So I'm repeating myself now. I'll give it 84 minus 10 for the reasons that I have outlined. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please subscribe because I'm going to do lots more. No, don't subscribe. Don't subscribe to me because I am a blinking buffoon. Okay. We'll do two sets in the sunset next time, not today. 
because I need to get the vinyl and the album and I'll do a whole album review as well. I bet you're looking forward to that one. Diolch am fawr iawn. Diolch am Thank you for listening. Enjoy today.